right guys, welcome to another Honey Hole Angling Fly Tying video. I'm having a fly tying conversation with Zach Harris who's on the vise. Zach, what are you tying today? I am tying what I believe is the gangster crab. Now the only reason I say I believe it to be the gangster crab is because I've been tying this pattern for a while and I learned it from a YouTube video and I just forgot which YouTube video I learned it on. So. Uh, but like you can see, I started my thread, and I'm just doing some open wraps. You don't need to cover the shank. We just want to move our thread and progress it just past the bend of the hook here. And we're going to start with s -DAS. No, yes. We're going to start with s -DAS and we are going to make a little ball on our shank. What I'm doing with the s -DAS, I'm pulling some of the flash fibers out to so expose the center core, the thread. I'm going to tie that thread in to keep the bolt to a minimum. Capture it, move my thread out of the way. Here now, Zach, gonna... have you caught a uh, redfish on this fly? I have not caught on this particular fly, but I know a lot of people who have. Actually, I know a few locals who have in Louisiana recently. Or at least a, a, a fly similar to this one. Mm -hmm. So I'm just making... Well, the nice thing is redfish aren't picky, so... Yep. Sometimes they are, sometimes they just want something that makes a loud noise on the water. So I'm progressing my thread back toward that ball we made. I'm going to capture this s -DAS. Did you tie that s -DAS backwards? Did I? Like, did you tie it down or forward? Well, I tied it, as you're saying, I tied it normal, forward, toward the eye of the oh, Okay, maybe just from where I'm sitting at. Looks so what I'm gonna do, it looks a little funny right now. But I'm gonna comb it all forward and wrap over that tag end and kind of push those fibers forward as well so it's kind of all going the same direction. Uh-oh. <sighs> Gotta love it. Breaking thread. Everybody stay Did you calm. hit the hook point? I don't know. Or are you too strong? I think I'm just too strong. Little pro tip. Start your thread on your bobbin and then suck it through. Fast. Insert funny joke here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so when you break your thread, stay calm. Don't freak out. You can usually save it. No problem. Mistakes are going to happen. Oh, yeah. In all of our videos, there's some kind of mistake. So it's not the end of the world. Learn from it and move on. Anybody who's tied with me has seen me break my thread 35 times on one fly. So next, what I'm doing, I should have prepared this before we started, but I didn't. Because I'm combing out my pseudo hair, and I'm going to get a tail ready for this fly. Let me trim it off the hide here and I'll show you what I'm doing. So you said you've been tying a lot of these lately, but you haven't fished them before. Right. I tie flies for fun, not to fish. Mm. Arts and crafts. Okay, so I got my clump of pseudo hair. And you can see it's pretty nasty. This piece, I'm gonna take it, I'm gonna kinda hand stack it to get the butt ends somewhat even. <coughs> I'll take my 50 cent hair comb, kind of comb out the junk. Ugh. I think it's time for me to get a new comb. Then I'll take my scissors and I'll trim those butt ends even. And now I'm going to grab those butt ends, I'm going to look at the tips. I'm just going to pinch the very tip of these to kind of even this up as well. Looks good to me. I'm going to tie it about one, one and a half to two shank lengths so we can get some movement. I'm going to do a couple loose wraps, pinch the sides of the hook, pull straight down and break your thread. Perfect. There's one. Start the counter landing. 
What uh, size thread are you using? 140. How are you breaking 140? Because it's not mine, it's yours. I pulled it off of your bench. No telling how old it is, right? Is, it, is that a thing? I just don't I just don't break thread. Well you have to tie flies to break thread landing. Oh. <laughs> uh, I'm probably hitting my hook. I just tie crappy clousers. Let's try this again. So don't panic. We save it. So the good thing about using a really thin thread is you can afford to make mistakes. You can afford to put too many thread wraps because it's thin. Take our tail. Loose wraps, pinch the sides and pull straight down to lock it in. Do a couple more wraps to secure. I'm gonna wrap forward to cover just behind that S dash. There we go, so we got our tail. Take my scissors and I'm gonna trim those out of there. Next, we're gonna tie in some eyes. My eyes. So I use, I make my own monofilament eyes with epoxy and black nail polish. And we'll probably do a video on how to make those. Oh, how easy it is. Yeah, definitely. Because we've done, uh, we have a crab claw video. So if you want to put a claw on your crab, I have a video up on the channel on how to make that. We'll link that above for you if you want to check it out right now. But this fly does not call for claws. But we'll do a video showing you how to make the eyes. So what I do is I take my eye and I'm going to measure it. I want it to stick out past that bend of the hook because we're actually going to bend the eye so it's not straight. It'll be at an angle. And the way I do that is I'll measure Take some pliers, uh, maybe a little bit longer. <clears throat> I'm gonna crimp it. And as I'm squeezing as hard as I can, I'm gonna crease that monofilament. You can see my nail is turning white. I'm pushing hard. And then I'm also, again, hard to see, but there's a flat spot on that monofilament. I'm gonna continue making that flat spot a little longer. And that's where we're gonna tie in. And then I'll trim off the excess behind that flat spot. And we'll tie the eye in. Now we want to tie it in. You don't want to tie it straight. We'll tie it at kind of an angle. So that mono will actually kind of wrap up the side to the top of the hook shank. Okay, we won't worry about the end of it here in a minute. Now we'll do the same thing on the opposite side. Take our eye. Now, what I'll do is I'll take my finger and I'll push the first eye down, kind of get an idea of where I want to pinch this so we can make it even and symmetrical. Ooh, that's pretty close. Squeeze the pliers, bend the eye. And continue to crimp that mono, make it flat. Now our fly, we've spun it. So now, I'm gonna tie on the side. Now that your hook is the upside down, so to speak, that mono will kinda wrap underneath, or we can spin it back. And we want our eyes if we fold them. It's really tough to see. I'm gonna try. Fold them, they're gonna be pretty even with each other. And that's more for fly fishermen than the fish. The fish don't care. Maybe, I don't know, I've been told they can count. Okay, so we got our eyes, we've got our tail tied in. Next, we are going to tie in our rubber legs. This one I've got a clump of two. What I'll do is I'm gonna let my thread hang. I'm gonna fold these legs over the, the thread. And if anybody watched the last video, we're gonna use our thread to guide it on. Pull tight or put some tension so they'll stay in place. A couple of wraps to lock them in. Now we'll take the back or the front, the clump of leg closest to the eye of the hook up 
over, capture, and pull forward. I ah, see, I'm hitting my hook point. That's the problem. So now, if I've done this right, oof. If I've done, oh, there it is. <laughs> this is a good one to do a thread break counter on. Yep. I'm telling you, well, my defense. You know it would help, Zach, hmm. if you didn't hook the hit the point of the hook. You think so? I think that might be a problem. We're back. <laughs> and if I did it right, we should have two legs on one side and two legs on the other. Spin it to a check. Looks good to me. So I'll pull them, stretch them, and kind of wrap back toward here. Now we're gonna take our Palmer chenille, which is very similar to what to the Estas, but it's just got a longer flash fiber on it. <coughs> and this time, instead of pulling the material out of that core, I'm actually gonna trim, get a straight end, and expose the core itself. Tie this guy in. Half hitch. And we're going to just wrap this around the hook. This is a preference. I'm going to do one, two, Three, let's look at it. Three looks good. Now Zach, why do you like this fly so much? Given the fact that you've never fished it. Uh, well, crab patterns sometimes can be complicated, time consuming. This one I found is really easy because when you're tying an EP crab and you figure eight these clumps of EP fibers in, it usually takes forever. This, we're only using four clumps of EP. So it ties really quickly. It looks really cool. Um, again, I, I tie flies more for fun than to fish. I'll fish them when I get the chance, but I like the way it looks. It makes me look good on Instagram. Just an easy tie to, or easy fly to tie. Uses a lot of materials. I will warn you about that. Next, so we've got that tied in. Now we're gonna use a foxy brush. Uh oh, I lost my. We're gonna use a foxy brush. I'm gonna trim this wire a little shorter. Anytime I'm tying weight onto a fly, this wire, although it's barely anything is going to add some weight. I'm going to tie it on the bottom, whatever the bottom of the fly is going to be in the end. So that weight will help keel it correctly. Tie that brush in. I'm going to fold everything forward as best as I can and wrap this a couple times. Three, and let's do one more. So I'm gonna bring my thread back to where I tied it in. And you unravel when you bring it back. You just yeah. don't tie over it back. You don't, you really don't like that bulk, do you? Yeah, if I can unravel, I will. It depends on the fly. If there's a lot going on, sometimes it's tricky to unravel. But if you can unravel, that's, that's, that's a good thing to do. And I've got this brush locked in. Now there's one or two things you can do. You can cut it. The reason I don't want to cut it is because I'd have to use the tip of my scissors and I'll hurt the blades. If I try to use way deep in the jaws, I could cut material. So I'm going to do what we call helicopter and grab it and just start spinning it. Eventually, Landon, you might want to speed this part of the video up. <laughs> Got pliers. Open that drawer next to you. 
Oh, there you go. Don't need to. It'll break. We can comb everything forward. Wrap over it now. The reason we like to helicopter instead of cut, not only does it save your scissors, but if you cut wire, it leaves a really sharp edge. If you and Zach's prone to breaking bread, so. Listen, Landon, this isn't a celebrity roast here, okay? <laughs> All right, so now what we'll do, normally I'll tie this in first, but as long as you leave yourself room, you can do this whenever. I'm going to tie in some brass eyes here, tough to see. Now typically you want to tie these in first to help mark, use it as a marker as far as where you need to stop with your materials. Um, if you've tied enough of a set fly, you don't necessarily have to do that. Um, I'm going to tie these in right behind that eye of the hook. I'm going to do some figure eight. <laughs> Land, that was my stomach, dude. Land is making faces. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, however many that was. I'll do the exact same number, perhaps on the opposite side to help pull those eyes straight. Check them. Oh, just about some ways to go. You can alternate one either direction. You can do two one way, two the other way. You can do eight one way, eight the other way. It all ends up the same. Once you get them straight, we'll go under the eyes, over the hook. That'll lock them in. Now you can put super glue here if you want. You can put whatever kind of head cement you want or UV if you want to. I don't find it necessary. The crab patterns that I do finish, I mean, I tie my own flies. So if it falls apart, it falls apart. I'll just make another one. Uh, but yeah, cement, you can use cement pretty much anywhere on the fly you want. Okay. Now, we're going to go back right behind that brush that we tied in. As close as you can get to it without going over it. This is the part that people find time consuming on these flies. So what I've done, I've pre-cut some EP fibers. So I've taken one full length piece of EP and cut it into, into quarters. Roughly. What I'm going to do so if I can do this with the camera up for me. I'm gonna lay this EP fiber over the top of the hook. I'm gonna cross from the front of the clump to the back. Okay. I'm gonna grab it, come under the hook, and do the opposite direction, from the back of the clump to the front. This is proving to be a little difficult. Okay, so it's loose. And I don't know if you can see this right here. It's a loose X over that material. That gives me an opportunity to grab it on both ends, wiggle it back and forth, pull it forward. I can pull tight. And do one or two more of those X wraps. Okay. So now that material should be locked in there. I'll grab it, pull it forward tight, and wrap right behind it couple times and then I'll actually go back to the eyes the dumbbell eyes and back forward and the reason I do that is to uh, I'm lost here the reason I do that is to keep that body to keep the hook shank and even there's no taper to it because if you keep wrapping thread it's gonna keep adding more and more taper and you're gonna end up with a clump of thread on your fly so then after I get that first one tied in, I take a piece of lead wire, wrap around the hook shank, and make a loop, go over that material, and hair tie it out of the way. What a trick. Yeah, it makes this way easier, way easier. Is that like self-taught trick, or did you snag that from another tire? I learned that from the guy that taught me almost everything I know. Gabe Avalos? Unfortunately, no. <laughs> <laughs> Philip, fly fish Philip, check Fly fish Philip. So now I take my other color, Oh, I know Philip. Philip's a yeah, good guy. Yeah, you know Philip. He taught me that trick. Now that I've got this hair tied out of the way, I'm going to do the exact same thing with the next EP. You can do the same color. You can do an alternate color. My flies are... I try to catch fishermen on Instagram with mine, so the prettier, the better. Gaudier, the better. We're going to take it. Same concept. We're going to wiggle it back and forth. Get those X wraps tight. Oops. Pull down. 
pull forward, wrap really tight, go back to the eyes, back to the EP. We take our wire, boom, next clump. Does that work better than a hair clip for this fly? Yeah, hair clips are bulky. So if I have a hair clip, if I'm holding materials over here, it's one thing, but if I put a hair clip here, it gets in the way. I can see that. You see what I mean? It gets way in the way of the wire. And the thing is, the wire, it's not trash. You can take this and wrap it back onto the spool and use it for a fly later, yeah. or you can continue to use it for this purpose. Eventually, it'll break, uh, but you're not wasting wire by doing this. Uh, anyway, same idea. We are gonna get it set, hold it in place, do our other X wraps. Wiggle it back and forth, orient it, pull it forward, tight. Excuse me. Right, we got one more clump. The trick to this is just material management. If you can get comfortable controlling your material, then this fly is super easy. If you try to do it without that lead wire trick, it becomes a mess really easy. All right, now I'm gonna take my lead wire, I'm gonna do it one more time. It looks like a, a rat's nest right now. It will. So now what I'm going to do, we have our thread wraps. We could either leave it bare, you can cover it with UV, or you can cover it with dubbing. We can take dubbing, and another trick, if you've got a dubbing dispenser like this, you can take your scissors, your whip finisher, another hook, take the point, just dip it in there, and you can kind of get your dubbing started. This here. So I'm gonna get some orange. Ooh, that'd be a good color to finish on. Yeah. You don't need a lot. We'll take our dubbing. Dub our thread. And really what we're just trying to do, you can, it kind of looks like an egg sack or you're just making it look good for you either way. We'll do one wrap behind the eyes, cross the eyes, cross the eyes, and then we'll whip finish here. I'm just gonna do a half hitch because I don't see my whip finisher. Now, I'm gonna take my gun cleaning brush. Buy these at any outdoor store. The reason I use this is it's got a thick end on one side and a thin end on the other, or a thin brush on the other, and we can take it and we can brush this stuff out sideways. Use your finger to flatten it. You can see our barring. We have the blue and tan, makes a nice Looks barring. Good. Looks crabby. Yeah, it does. And then you can either be a perfectionist, pull this from the vise and cut it perfectly, or you wanna be quick, grab both sides that you brushed out. You're gonna mess them up a little bit doing this, but it's okay. Hold them up, take your scissors. Use the curved ones for this part? You can use curved, you can use whatever just scissors you prefer. Yep, just go around your finger. Nice. Fishable crab pattern. Cut your right legs. off the vise. You cut your legs. With these sightline legs, they're freaking sweet. Got like a sandy color into a blue and gold. I'm gonna trim them just shorter than the, just barely shorter than the, the tail. Boom. Fishable, uneven, <laughs> red fish pattern. Uh, 
little clean up. Little clean up. You could take it off the vise and clean it up. Realistically, it'll fish fine just like this. But we could take it, and I'll actually, I'll spend some time with this before I put it in the box or give it to whoever. But that alone right there, nothing wrong with that. If you want, you can bar that tail. Alright guys, thanks for watching our video. If you need any of the materials, we'll have the link in the description where you make it easy for you guys to go pick up the materials for this fly. We really appreciate you watching and we'll see you guys on the next video. Thanks guys. Boop.